And with that, I will turn it over to Katrina. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, hope you're having uh, good weather where you are. We've got a little bit of thunder here in Tallahassee. So if uh, you see me jump, that's what's going on here. Um, I'm Katrina Harkness. I'm the Adult Learning Consultant here at the Bureau of um, Library Development, the Division of Library and Information Services. And um, I'll be facilitating today along with Amy Tipler. Hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so we're here to talk about um, arts programming in your library. Um, and I invite anybody to turn on your camera and join us. I know some of you can't and you'll just participate in chat and that's fine too. So I'm um, wondering, what do you have going on in your libraries that you're excited about that you've done in, with arts programming or what's something that um, you haven't done yet that you would like to do? Anybody who wants to just unmute themselves and jump in, go ahead, Carl. Go I'll ahead. go ahead and start. Um, historically, we've done some programming, and, and part of the reason why I wanted to participate in this is um, because I work for a public library, a county library system, Palm Beach County, actually. And uh, as a programmer, it's always been difficult to schedule. Um, and when I think of arts programming, I'm thinking of art classes and music classes. Um, and I also teach just on the side, we have Tai Chi and yoga. So these are all skill developing programs where you benefit from the repeat uh, attendance and uh, long term, there's a long term arc of, of a skill or ability uh, acquisition. And the nature of, of library programming for the public library system that I work for is kind of a drop in or at will <laughs> um, attendance. So even even though, for example, um, classes require you to develop a skill and learn from previous skills developed and learned to build more skills. It makes it very difficult for this at will drop in uh, approach because you're constantly getting new attendees to programs and it, it, it uh, kind of creates a drag effect to, for those who have been attending regularly. And uh, let me bring it forward a little bit. I mean, I've had history um, developing art programs where you develop skills over that time and the yoga and the Tai Chi. Well, recently we've benefited from the uh, um, donation of a number of really quality musical instruments. And so we have ukuleles and guitars, and we're trying to develop uh, an opportunity for people to develop the skill of being able to play. And we have a little more experience working with the ukulele, but we still are having that drag effect where we want to encourage the skill development, but we're constantly getting new people dropping into these classes and there's no way we can stop that from happening. Um, but it's made it difficult because we have a, a core group that start to develop and want more challenge and their skill level increases, but trying to create an opportunity without creating a advanced class or an intermediate class um, has been challenging. So, I mean, um, we get a lot of excitement, we get a lot of interest, but our guitar classes are languishing because we have that very problem. New people coming in all the time and teachers getting dis frustrated because they have are having to balance this, you know, advanced students with new students all the time and content. I mean, it sounds like I'm just complaining. <laughs> about what's going on, but I'm hoping to get some insights and some uh, some tips that might help uh, improve that. Uh, thanks, Carl. I think that's a really good point um, and something that maybe other arts programming agencies don't deal with in the same way that libraries do because it's easier for them to have a set uh, class schedule, whereas libraries are more expected to be open to everybody. Um, we had a recent um, webinar about um, stories are in the community that was talking about how important developing those uh, skills and building on those skills are um, for your arts programs and that sense of mastery and, um, and, and developing that. But, but you bring up a great point. Has anybody um, had a solution to this or is also dealing with the same problem? Oh, this is uh, Gene from uh, Palm Herbal Library. Um, sort of like a, a different uh, take on the musical instruments. Uh, we don't offer that in-house, but what we do, though, and we got this through private dollars, uh, we loan musical instruments, and it's primarily housed in the children's area, although anybody can borrow them. Uh, with a library card, you can borrow them up to 28 days. It, it, what prompted us is that uh, we had several parents that complaining that the kids wanted them to buy a guitar or drums or whatever, and then for those of us who are parents, we know that after the first couple of times, the kids don't want to play with them anymore. 
So before they invest, they want to try them out. So with a library card uh, and with some private dollars, with the exception of wind instruments, of course, because of the saliva, uh, we offer an array of different types of instruments you can borrow. Uh, of course, the ukuleles, any kind of string instruments, uh, uh, drums, uh, I think a xylophone. And of course, for those uh, Saturday Night Live uh, aficionados out there, we do have cowbells. So they are borrowing a lot too. Uh, and that seems to work well. Uh, what we're looking at doing in the future when we go and create our adult microspace, we are looking at introducing musical instruments there also. But uh, it seems to be very helpful, uh, very supportive. People love it. We work with a local uh, uh, music store, and the guy gives us discounts on different products that he sells to us, as well as we refer everybody to go to him uh, to do the tuning of instruments and so forth. So it's a nice working relationship there. Uh, but we started off with some private dollars. So uh, um, so that's what we've been doing so far. That's great. Thank you, Jean. Anybody else dealing with the same questions and have a, another a similar question or solution? You can try focusing on skill building. So um, with our watercolor class, we were focusing on things that can be interpreted really basically, like um, just getting a solid wash in one color light and then going darker. Um, and certainly people who have been watering coloring a long time know how to do this, um, but they're not beholden to that specific skill. They can work on um, other things. So when you focus just on the acquiring of a specific skill related to it, it kind of lets people go where they're at for themselves. That makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Nadine. That's a that's a good idea. Anybody else have a solution they found to to this issue? They want to share. And I'm, I see we've got some comments in the chat, so I'm going to jump into those next. I see watercolors, yeah. Um, at Pasco Libraries, we've been working with local artists to display their work in our gallery spaces. Right now, it's in this passive stage, but I would like to incorporate a programming element. Well, that sounds interesting. And then we've done many craft type programs like bath bombs and Pinterest style holiday inspired crafts more are being requested and we're trying to find new ideas because what we offer is usually free compared to our fine arts department who asks for payment for these types of programs we are however a bit out of our depth because we're not so experienced with all sorts of crafting <laughs> the question gene what library are you within with again uh i'm with uh, palm harbor we're in pinellas county just north of uh, the clearwater area Okay. And I work at Evans Library, Florida Tech. Since we are a college library rather than a public library, we typically do arts programming as part of de-stressing programming around finals. I would like to offer more arts and crafts workshop throughout the year as we do have a makerspace and most students don't know enough about it to fully utilize all equipment. My biggest challenge with any workshop is really advertising and turnout. The people that do show up enjoy the workshop, but turnout is typically very small. Uh, and then we have a question, uh, I think, in response to Carl's question, can you pair the more advanced people with the less advanced ones? If interested, of course. Um, and then if you work for a public library and offer art, music, yoga, et cetera, programs, do you know if this results in any feedback or requests to not offer programs that might directly compete with the city or county community centers programming offerings. We try to offer these type of library programs tied to literacy or running your own business. Um, and um, this often, oh, can you pair the more advanced uh, students with the less advanced, this often works in the education sphere. It helps more experienced learners reinforce their basics. 
And we have started to do a craft corner and jewelry making class so far. We're offering basics as we are learning as well, looking for different ideas. Okay, great. Oh. Um. Okay. So, um, so a lot of folks um, uh, doing crafting. Does anybody have the issue of competing with other programming? Has that been a problem for anybody? Hello, this is Lisa Testa from Boca Raton Public Library. I pose that question because, you know, we do work collaboratively with our um, community centers in the sense that we fall under the same organizational structure. So the library falls under recreation services. Therefore, if we're offering like craft classes or painting classes, and there and our community centers wish to do so as well. Um, we don't want to run into a situation where we're offering at the same time or same style, you know, that if that's their meat and potatoes, so to speak, then what should we be focusing in on? Um, so one of the things we have different initiatives, different years, um, and that may help us, but there's so many cool things to be doing, um, you know, with the arts in, in a library setting. So we're just trying to be mindful. And I wondered if anybody else had um, that situation where they maybe had to coordinate their programming with other sections in their city or county. Anybody want to answer that? If you worked with your local um, agencies that, or maybe you're doing some similar type programming? I know in a previous um, discussion, we had um, somebody that let us know that they were actually partnering with some of those agencies and actually doing some of their programs outside of the library in, in as part of those partnerships. Um, and it also found some of those uh, partners, whether it was local agencies or, or guilds like Quilters Guilds or Art Guilds, um, to come in as instructors for their programs. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've done similar things too. Um, like we have a, a office of sustainability in our city, so we have done some joint um, programs and partnerships. You know. Uh, uh, with them and the like. Um, so yeah, thank you. I just thought I'd uh, throw that question out there. Great. And then I, I see we do have something in chat. We've started to do a craft corner and jewelry making class. So far, we were offering basics as we were learning as well, looking for different ideas. I may have read this one already. Yes, but ours are free. Key West has a very artistic community, so we try and stay away from what the community offered at the guilds. I see. Um, and we allow outside people to teach at our makerspace and pay instructors. They include the price of materials and their fee. And I, um, I may have accidentally sent something as a direct message because I'm getting a, some direct messages I think are meant to go to the group, but if they're meant to just go to me, I'm happy to read them. Oh, um, we have somebody. Oh, 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 Katrina, of course. Hi, Katrina. Hi, also Katrina. Um, I don't usually get to say that. Uh, so my name is Katrina Brockway. I'm from the um, Palm Beach County Library System. I wanted to offer a suggestion for um, Elena, who had uh, said that they were kind of running a little bit out of like crafty ideas because not a lot of people there were experienced with crafting, but there was requests for that. Um, so a program that I've offered a few times I call it art in the afternoon, but basically I put out crafting supplies and folks can just come and make things and I'll theme them. So like we'll do paper crafts one time. And so people can just come and I have a whole bunch of papers and paper punches and things. And you get the sort of craft class experience without the instructor needing to know how to do the thing. Um, so you can do that with all different kinds of things, have like a decoupage time program and have a um, painting and just put out a bunch of stuff, paint brushes, paints, acrylic, watercolor, whatever, um, and just kind of let them go to town. And you can have, you can kind of meet the need without necessarily having to know a whole lot yourself about how to do it. 
Um, it also helps with when you have the really wide range of experiences, like we were talking about earlier, um, because like a beginner could go and just, you know, slap some acrylic on a piece of paper and have some fun. And, you know, somebody who might be a little bit more experienced can, you know, come up with something absolutely amazing. <laughs> That's a great idea. And I guess if you have any um, books in your library about those kind of crafts, that's a great time to pull them out as well. Um, does anybody have any other ideas along those lines? Or I also saw in the question about marketing. How do you let people know that you have these programs and how do you pull people in? or anything else that you want to talk about. Word of mouth, okay. Is that um, people that are already in your class, you know, sharing it with their, their friends and family? Facebook, uh, social media platforms like Meetup, uh, we talked to patrons who expressed interest in books on the topic. Uh, from Alachua County, we've been using craft programs to advertise for our makerspace kits and other programs, i.e. at Cone Park Branch, we've, we're making a cosplay club to use our sewing machines, 3D printers, jewelry making kits, and our annual Phenomonium convention. We're getting cosplays ready in time for this event. Oh, that's cool. Outreach into the community, do a mini version away from the library, uh, bring them in for something, then bring them in for something more involved. Um, that's all, that's great. I, I know one library said they put their sewing machines right by the entrance. So when people walk in, they cannot help but see that they've got the sewing machines there and that that's generated some interest. Katrina, this is Jean. I, I just want to follow up on that comment from Alicia regarding outreach. Uh, that's one of my uh, concerns. I want to reach out to everybody. Right now, our library, the only two things that we do right now is we have a good partnership with our local art museum, uh, Lee Baratton Museum of Art. And the two things that we do with them, well, there are several, but the two things we do with their site is uh, I do uh, a, uh, a monthly art book club uh, focusing on primarily in the on the 20th century, but earlier too. Uh, and also our children's department goes in there and they do a program called Leap into Art, which is a story time uh, regarding different uh, artists or art pieces and whatever. And I know I can do more as far as bringing art into the community. And outreach is going to be one of our goals on our next long range plan. Is anybody doing any kind of art outreach? I, I like to hear more what's going on out there. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Anybody doing more out, art outreach, going into the community with your art programs? And uh, while we're waiting, uh, Rebecca has um, some links to share. We have a list from our partner agency of local art uh, councils and statewide organizations. So we'll just throw that into the chat too so that you have that available. I don't know, Alicia, if you want to talk more about how your outreach um, into the community works, your your mini versions away from the library that brings them in for, for more. That sounds interesting. Okay, test. Can anybody hear me? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. I didn't know how the microphone would work on this uh, system. So just thinking off the top of my head, for example, um, one of the more recent outreaches that I went on with a couple of other staff members is uh, at... Uh, in Dade City, they have a area that's called Butterfly Park, and the city puts on uh, this big, huge ex uh, exhibition that um, has different local makers and um, crafts people, and the library itself had a table there as well. We had a bunch of different little uh, crafts that taught not only the children, you know, how to do things with their hands, but also was teaching, it was all butterfly themed, so teaching them 
incorporating that element of learning about butterflies and insects. And additionally, because our library that I work at, it's called the New River Library. We have a large garden makerspace area. We were also giving out along with the crafts, um, seed packets that had wild wildflower seeds in them. So teaching them about gardening as well. So it was like a compounded effort with uh, uh, several staff members in the city of Dade City. And it was a really wonderful time. It sounds wonderful. I love the seed program at our library. I love participating in that. I see a couple of comments have come in. Carl said uh, that they've partnered with the local Norton Museum to offer book discussions combined with an art lecture. Well, that's interesting. And Sarah says we use QR codes that link to tutorials and step-by-step -step videos and lay out the materials and stations. Oh, that's nice. That's a way to, to get around um, not having a, an instructor is to just uh, provide the link to the information. That's fantastic. Anybody else want to share um, outreach that they've done? And Amy T, if you want to jump in, in on any of this, feel free. I see Rebecca Campbell just turned on your camera. Do you want to? Did you want to share something? Sure. So, um, like the panel situated, um, so I'm with the Sudbury Public Library in Lake County, Florida. Oh, sorry about my camera. I just ran into my desk. Um, but um, we have a an Indian retirement community here, Shinnecton, and um, we worked with them last year to host this Diwali event, which included concerts, concert, music, and dance, and some art and craft, Indian, Indian themed art and craft projects. And then um, we worked with our um, African American Heritage Organization and um, offered them like an African American Heritage Festival concert. And um, that outreach is actually, I had my manager recognize that the library is a center for art and culture. And he's actually um, is giving us his art and culture budget next year. So that was a big win for us. But um, as far as outreach, we worked with like our local communities, you know, like the Indian retirement community, our African American heritage organization, and we kind of started there. We already had like a regular concert series going, and then we just um, started working with targeted outreach groups. That's fantastic. Thank you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's anyone here from Leon County that's on, but um, there is, and stop me, but I used to work for Leon County Public Library and a really cool, unique way that we worked with our local um, council on culture and arts was to have them come in and do judging for a community gingerbread house competition that we did every December. Um, and it was very, it's very popular, still doing it now. Um, it's been several years since they started it, but it really helped build a relationship with them in a unique way that wasn't just, let's have you bring in some instructors, let's have you do this and that. It was more of a fun, unique way of getting to know them. And so now they're partnering with them on other things. And they, they also have, I don't know if other people's local um, culture councils have this, but they on their website, for us anyway, they have a whole events page where you can market all of your things on there. As long as if it's the parameters are like free, open to the public, like that kind of stuff, you can you can always market through there too. Um, I don't know if anyone else has that option, but just putting it out there. Thanks, Amy. Has anybody else um, done um, competitions and uh, art competitions and brought in judges or had local um, participants for that? I know I was visiting a library recently that had a um, Halloween competition of pumpkins in the library. That was fun to look at. Well, while um, anybody jump in and and if you have something to talk about, but but while we're we're uh, kind of got a little bit of space, I've got 
oh, we have a district-wide teen art show every spring. Well, that's cool. And Caitlin, if you want to talk about that some more, I'd love to hear about it. Um, uh, Rebecca says we host an annual bookmark design contest every summer. Nice. Oh, I love that. Makes me want to go design a bookmark right now. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so just to share a few more resources that we have from the previous, um, some previous webinars we've had, we do have a um, uh, Indiana offer, uh, university offers a free resource guide on memory, art, and aging. So there's a PDF version that you can download, but you can also order a spiral bound copy to have for your library. And that's free, both the PDF and the, the um, bound copy. And it has a lot of activities that are designed around um, um, building arts programs for older adults, but there's a lot that's applicable uh, uh, for a wide range of adults and, uh, of ages, including um, intergenerational programming. And that's all free and available. Oh, yeah, thank you, Rebecca. For that. I think those were the resources I wanted to share. Um, and there was a question I wanted to follow up on. Somebody said, da, 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 how do we do this? Oh, it just went out of my brain. We have an unanswered question. Somebody help me. What, what questions do we have unanswered? We talked about marketing, um, ideals for programs, finding instructors. I, I guess I, I wonder about audiences. Um, I know I've been... Um, doing some research lately on the importance of art pro, uh, programs for patrons um, with dementia and Alzheimer's. Do you do, um, and I see we've got, um, for different audiences, we're focusing on teens. Um, what other audiences are you focusing on when you when you have your arts programs? And um, see, uh, multicultural, we've talked about um, Hispanic community here, African-American community. Um, uh, Colleen says, in our library's art showcase, it has several mixed media artists that have been on display that have offered classes to the public. This was wildly popular because the patrons met with them and learned from the artists themselves. Oh, nice. Very nice. Um, and then I guess another question I want to throw out is what... Um, kind of resources and support would you like to see from the Bureau coming up? Do you, would you like to see us look for expert speakers on a particular topic? Is there a particular um, area you'd like to explore more? Um, the, oh, um, Amy Tipler is sharing the Yorkville Public Library in Illinois. The art and poetry grapevine, the idea of a chain of art and poetry, local artists donate art, Local writers create a poem inspired by the art and the inspiration for another work of art by someone else, et cetera, goes for the whole year. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really cool way to get submissions and build on a program throughout the year with there being not like classes and putting together materials and things, but they just kind of build upon each other. So yeah, community effort. Oh, and that's another one I found, which is kind of similar to what Colleen was talking about. I found this from um, a, a Winnipeg Public Library in Canada. It does something called Makers in Residence, which I thought was really cool. And I didn't know if anyone else did something like that. Um, so I thought I'd share, which is where they bring in local um, artists and they do mentorships, mainly for school age children, um, from what I could find. But I thought that was really cool. They just have like drop in sessions where they can come and be mentored and learn about arts and crafts and how to you know, work different mediums, which I thought was great. A topic of art and intergenerational programs to help community, build community post pandemic. 
Yeah, that's a great idea. I think a lot of communities are struggling with that, building back up that sense of community. Thank you. We'll, we'll put that on our, our list. Okay. Um, and I guess I want to throw it open now to anything that you want to talk about that we haven't covered yet. Um, anything that you want to ask of each other or anything that you want to share that you've worked on? Oh, Sarah said, we have an adult learn to paint and draw better program that's been very popular with people who use it to do art but haven't practiced in a while. Many of them used to find a lot of fulfillment from painting and drawing, but they are not confident enough to get back into it on their own, and they are too advanced for a purely beginner class. We also provide all the materials for that. I know not all counties can afford that, though. That sounds like a great program. That's nice. Um, I know finding materials is an ongoing challenge, um, finding the money for that. I think in the last um, discussion, we had some um, libraries had had success getting donations for those from their local art agencies or guilds. I don't know if anybody has any other solutions for how to pay for materials um, so that you can offer them for these classes. I know there's been some um, recycling. Um, some folks have... Um, gotten their local um, painting with a twist or other similar kinds of businesses that have a lot of canvases left over to donate those. And um, then the art program just donates, either donates on top, um, sorry, paints on top of those or uses them as, as inspiration um, to kind of um, just um, use that as a jumping off point to do a variation of their own painting. I don't know if anybody else has come up with any creative um, solutions though for getting a hold of those materials. If you do, we'd love to hear about those. I know it's an ongoing issue. Teachers too. Anything else you wanna talk about? Any Anything related to this or any other questions that you have for folks? And I see Amy um, put another link in the chat um, for the NEA Big Read grant. Yeah, I didn't know if anyone's ever done that before. Um, that's in this group right now. We we did it at Land County when I was there for a couple of years. Then it was you you get grant money, but you can also partner with local agencies and organizations mm -hmm. to you know take whatever book you choose from their list and make it into different types of programs. It doesn't have to be arts programming, but um, I thought it was a really good way to like you get the funding for it, but then you also get the ability to do extra programs or things that might be outside of your means normally. So I thought I'd share it just in case. Thanks, Amy. And I see Sarah followed up. Um, we also have a donation closet here. It's open to the public to both donate and get what they need. We've had an incredible response. We asked the community to donate art prints they don't want anymore and we reuse them and I get a lot of canvases from thrift stores. Oh, that's great. I don't know if they're on right now, but there used to be a library here in Florida that checked out art to people. Um, they could hang it in there, especially if they had people could just come down um, for the winter. They had people that could check out art and hang it in their rentals for a little bit and then return it. So that's really cool. Different type of arts. Yeah, Yeah, that's uh, something else I kind of would like to take advantage of to check out some art, especially in advance of any kind of entertaining. That'd be nice. Okay. Um, I was kind of curious if anyone's doing arts um, for summer programming or any fall programming or winter programming, if you have like normal arts things that you tend to go for for those like more seasonal themes? Um, for our library, our summer reading kickoff party uh, for adults is bad art. So you're, no talent is required. Talent is discouraged. Um, make what you want of it. Um, and then in the fall, we're getting into doing um, still life because, you know, pencils are pretty cheap and easy and People just come and practice at their own leisure. That's very cool. It's very encouraging for people like me that can't 
can't draw very well. I'm sure they appreciate that space being offered to them. Is, uh, I see Robin said the same. We are asking for donations from anyone who's cleaning out their closets. Um, is anybody doing any book tie-ins with your art? I know um, Sarasota said at one point that they had a group that was really um, into Down Downton Abbey, and um, they used that as sort of a segue into researching um, the time period and architecture and a lot of other related topics. Anybody done any, any tie-ins that they like? I know every time I get to uh, watching the TV shows, I think I can do whatever's on them. I've been watching glass blowing and um, baking and, oh, what's the, the newest one that I, um, oh, the, the pottery, great pottery throwdown. Kind of makes me wanna give that a try. Uh, Caitlin says, I'm new to the library, but, uh, Cone Park Branch, we've provided a summer STEAM program. So combining science and art to show the interdisciplinary nature of science for kids. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so usually when we get kind of ready to um, wrap up, somebody's got something on their mind that they wanna share, but they've been saving it because they don't wanna um, interrupt anybody else. Ooh, Colleen says, I have a caricature artist coming next week. In addition to him drawing people in the audience, he will be talking about the process he is going through in his mind as he is actually drawing the person. Oh, that's wonderful. I love the talking about it. We had, when I was in elementary school, we had, um, um, Mark Brown, the the artvart author illustrator, came in and and drew um, uh, the kids in our class and talked about it, and I've never forgotten it. That was, it was something that just that whole experience of that. Um, Robin says, so far we've stuck with seasonal crafts, which they suggest like a craft for Mother's Day or Fourth of July. Yeah, seasons are reliable for ideas. I like that. Hey, Amy T, anything else you wanted to share with us? I don't have anything. I didn't know if anyone else wanted to share any programs that they're working on that they're really excited about um, before we wrap up today. Or if, if people do have questions, um, feel free to jump on and put them in the chat or come on the microphone and, and ask right away. Okay, well, I think um, I learned a lot today. I appreciate you coming and sharing everything. I think that was really interesting. Um, we're gonna um, end the program, but um, I'll hang around for a few minutes in case you have any questions for us or, or things you wanna share with us. Uh, we'll be here and we'll um, share the links out in chat that we've shared um, uh, in the follow-up email. You get those links and um, yeah, thank you everybody for coming today. This has been wonderful.